Hey folks, this is the ambiguous triangle discussion. This is inside of section 10.1. I fully expect that you're going to want to go and watch this video multiple times, possibly pause it. Um, I digest what I've said for the last 30 seconds and then move on, rewind possibly. This is probably the hardest discussion that I will have with you in chapter 10 which is why I wanted to do this on video so that you would have a chance to really be able to spend some time with it instead of just hearing me one time during class time say it. So what I'm looking at here, the ambiguous triangle is the one where we have side side angle. I have two sides that are given to me and an angle, but that angle is not between the two sides. So I've started drawing a picture. I don't have the whole entire triangle drawn, but let me just point a few things out. First of all, you see that this side is a side that I know. It's known because there's no arrows on it, unlike the side down here. This one has an arrow on it, not because it keeps going forever and ever, but because I don't know how long or how short this side is. So I've put an arrow on that one. The other thing is, is that I only have one angle drawn and this, that's this angle right here. So this is the one angle that I am given. Now, uh, let's put some letters to this. You'll notice that in this particular example, I have given you the acute angle A and I've given you side A. Now notice those two have the same name. I'm going to refer to that later on. And then the third thing I've given you is side B. And so let's call our angle that we have angle A, because in this particular instance, that's what I've been given. That means that side A has to be opposite that angle. Now don't get confused. That fluorescent green dashed line is not uh, side A. Um, that's simply the height of my triangle, whatever it might be. I'll discuss that in just a second. So side A is somewhere opposite angle A. I mean, side A could be like this, side A could be like this, side A, there's lots of things that side A could do, but I haven't drawn it yet, even though I know it. Um, I'm not drawing it quite yet because I have a couple of options for it. And then the only other side that I know is this one right here. So we're going to call that side B. Now that means if I haven't drawn side A, and I just now labeled side B, the side on the bottom has to be side C. I just don't know where side C ends. So um, I don't even really need to label that one yet, but just understand that side C is down on the bottom. Now, for the moment, like I mentioned, that uh, dashed line is going to be the height of my triangle. So for right now, I'm just call it, gonna call it H for height. And I want to pretend that we're back in chapter eight and that this is a right triangle and I can use Sokotoa on right triangles. And so the sine of angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse. We know that that's H, um, the opposite, the height of my triangle divided by B, which in this case is my hypotenuse. If I asked you to get the H alone, to get H by itself, then you would just simply tell me, let's move the B to the other side by multiplying, and I would have B times the sine of angle A. Now, the reason I go through this is because in a few minutes, we're gonna talk about the height. Every time we see height, I need to think B sine A. Every time I see height, I wanna think B sine A. In fact, we're gonna start writing B sine A as a substitute for the height of my triangle. So we'll go down here and let's look at all of the options that I might have for this ambiguous triangle. Now you'll notice that this right here is a picture much like the one that I just got finished drawing. And this time they drew in side A and poor side A, it's so short that there's no way it can reach all the way down to side C. So there's n it's too short. I cannot make a triangle out of this. If you compare how long side A is with the height of the triangle, we would all agree that side A is shorter than the height. And that's what you're gonna see written right over here to the side. Side A is less than or shorter than the height. Now I just got finished telling you that every time you see height, 
we want to mentally replace that. In this case, we're physically going to replace it with B times the sine of angle A. So side A is shorter than the height. Side A is shorter than B sine A. Now let's look at number two, option number two here. In this case, uh, side A is just right. So it's almost like we've got Goldilocks so far. We had one that was too short, and now we've got one that's just right. In fact, side A is exactly the same length as the height of my triangle. And in fact, this causes a right triangle. So you'll notice over here that side A is the same or equal to the height. So we'll say that side A is equal to B sine A. Now, for a moment, can you please skip over the third case? And I'd like for you to jump down to the fourth case. This one right here. So once again, we're comparing side A to the height of the triangle. If you look at this as side A, you'll notice that side A is longer than the height of this triangle. Side A is longer than the height of this triangle. And in fact, um, I can swing it back and forth and not only can I have a side A here, I can also have a side A over here. And either way, it still forms a triangle. So I have two separate triangles on this one. So over here, we've got side A is longer or greater than the height of my triangle. Again, for height, let's sub in B times the sine of angle A. Now let's go back to this and let's take a look at what we've got here. Notice that the three that we filled in, all three of those, side A is shorter than side B. Side A is shorter than side B. And if you'll even go back and look at the pictures, definitely side A is shorter than side B here. Side A is shorter than side B here. And in the last option, side A is shorter than side B. So, the fourth option is the one that's different. Now take a look at side A. Not only is it longer than the height, like the example down below, it's just plain longer than everything. It's the granddaddy of them all. So this guy is not just longer than the height, it's also longer than side B is. And that's really the only thing I have to know about this one is that side A is greater than side B, period. I don't even have a test that goes along with this one. So those are gonna be the four cases. Now going back one more time, what does that mean? So if I have that side A is shorter than B sine A, I have no solutions. I have no triangles. It's not long enough. It's too short, Goldilocks. If I have side A is equal to B sine A, ah, this is just right. So in fact, it causes a right triangle. If I have that side A is greater than B sine A, and in this case, I'm gonna have two solutions. I can make two triangles out of this. But heavens, if I simply have that side A is greater than side B, there's going to be one solution, and I don't have to run any tests at all for this. Now, I keep mentioning these tests. These are all going to go back to the flow chart that I have included for you in your notes. I'd like to talk about one more uh, option here. Notice that on the first four that I gave you, every single time angle A was an acute angle, in this case, my angle A is an obtuse angle. Angle A is obtuse. So one thing that I'd like for you to remember is something that I've mentioned in class multiple times, and that is the small side is always opposite the small angle, medium opposite medium, large opposite large. So when you look at case number one, here, because side A is shorter than side B, um, if this is the obtuse angle right here, then it has to be opposite the largest side. So the fact that A is not the largest side tells me there are no solutions here uh, whatsoever. And you can see that there in your chart, there's no solutions. The second one simply says if side A is the longest side and it's opposite the obtuse angle, then I'm going to have one solution and I'll just use the law of signs to solve that one solution. 
So we have either zero solutions or one solution either way. In class, I will teach you how to use the flowchart, and I think it's going to be um, pretty easy for you once you have that flowchart.